what's going on everyone and welcome to part 6 of tutorial series on api gateway authorization in the previous tutorial we have created an authorizer and configured it within the post method and now in this tutorial i will cover on how to access the api endpoint using tokens because now we will not be able to access or invoke the api endpoint without tokens so let's get started so assuming that you already have logged in into aws management console and once you are there navigate to api gateway and once you are there open the api endpoint that we have created probably in the part one of this tutorial series so in my case it's api auth so once you are within api gateway uh, navigate to stages and click on the stage that we have created in the previous tutorial while deploying this api gateway so what we are going to do here is we are going to try to invoke this api endpoint since we have implemented or configured authorizer so we'll check whether uh, it is allowing us to invoke this api endpoint successfully or not so copy this invoke url and navigate to postman so i will paste it over here click on post method so the resource that we have created was post hyphen json so we will see version one post hyphen json and then we are going to try to invoke this api endpoint so i will simply say send and as you can see it returned unauthorized right because uh, we had now configured the authorizer with an api gateway so what we will require here in order to access this api endpoint is sort of access token so what we have to do is we have to navigate to cognito so the reason we are navigating to cognito is that uh, if you remember then we had uh, checked authorization code grant right so once you are there click on manage user pools and within authorization code grant we have to first uh, fetch the uh, authorization code and then probably using that authorization code using postman we will be able to fetch the access token or the id token right so that's the reason uh, we will go to user pools and we will launch the hosted ui so click on app client settings click on launch hosted ui so for instance uh, i will uh, uncheck this custom scope right and say save changes so right now what we have is auth flow as authorization code grant allowed oauth scopes as open id right so i will launch hosted ui so we have to log in over here so my username was srcecde followed by password i will say sign in and here is our authorization code so copy this code navigate to postman and if you remember then we had this configured already uh, in one of the previous tutorial right so what i have to do is i have to navigate to body and all i need to replace this authorization code I will paste this and rest of the things remain as it is and I will say send. And as you can see we have the access tokens over here. Now if you remember then in the previous tutorial within API gateway while we were configuring the authorizer within this post method we had not configured OAuth scopes and we had left it none right. So let's check. So now I'm going to copy this access token and navigate back to the API endpoint URL and within headers uh, we have to pass key value pair. So which key value pair? So let's have a look. Navigate to API gateway. Click on authorizers. Now look at this token source, right? So we will require this authorizer as the header as the key for the header and the access token will be our value right so navigate to postman paste this authorizer now within value uh, copy this access token 
and paste it and let's check so click on send now again it's uh, saying that it's unauthorized right uh, because if you remember then this access token is bind with the particular scope that is open id so since uh, we have not configured open id as the oauth scopes and uh, we had kept it none it's unable to authorize this call right now in case uh, if i pass id token over here then it should be able to authorize so copy this id token uh, paste it as value and say send now as you can see uh, it was able to successfully authorize this call right because uh, we have not configured oauth scopes yet and what it will do is it will try to authenticate using id token uh, rather than access token now if we go ahead and uh, configure this OAuth scope as open ID. So go to post method, click on method request, edit this, say open ID, enter and click on this tick mark. And we have to redeploy this API endpoint. So select version one and say deploy. Now in this case, uh, we will not be able to authorize this uh, API gateway call using ID token. So let's have a look. Now, as you can see, now we are unable to access the API endpoint using this uh, ID token, right? It's because now we have configured the OAuth scope. And what does that OAuth scope uh, define is open ID. Now to access that scope, uh, we have to pass the access token and not the ID token in order to access that API endpoint. So what we have to do is navigate back to this uh, tab and copy this access token and replace the ID token with the access token and say send. Now, as you can see, uh, we were able to successfully authorize this API gateway call. So uh, in short, all you need to remember is when no auth scope uh, has been configured, uh, we will not be able to access that endpoint using access token. Instead, we have to use ID token. But uh, it's not a good idea to leave OAuth scope as none. So it should be configured, right? And another thing is once we configure the OAuth scopes, uh, we will be able to uh, authorize the uh, API call uh, using access token, right? So now within method request, we have open ID. So that's how uh, you can uh, access the API endpoint uh, using access token, right? Now let's navigate back to user pools. Now uh, let's uncheck this open ID and check this allowed custom scope, right? So uh, here we have defined two custom scopes that is json.write and json.read. So how we can use this? So for example, uh, here we have a method saying post. Now, uh, for example, this method is writing some data to a database, right? So in that case, what we can do is we can configure uh, OAuth scope as API auth json.write over here, right? So let's configure it. So I did this, uh, remove this open ID and copy this. Make sure you copy and paste and it's exactly same, right? So API auth slash JSON dot write. So what we are doing here is uh, we are, we have configured the write scope and using the access token, the user or the end client will be able to uh, perform the write operation by invoking this API endpoint. Now, for example, we have created another resource and that is for read. In that case, uh, we can define custom scope or the OAuth scope as API auth slash JSON dot read, right? So, so that's how uh, you can define uh, certain scopes uh, for the respective uh, methods, uh, for example, writing, reading or deleting something, right? So what will happen is uh, while we select the scope, uh, the access token that we will get will not be able to uh, invoke the API auth json.read scope 
and while we get this uh, access token for read and it will not be able to use for json.write until and unless we are passing both as a scope right so let's see uh, so save this now uh, right now the custom scope is api auth json.write and we had configured it over here successfully now we have to redeploy this api so i will say deploy api version 1 and say deploy right now let's check if we are able to uh, access or invoke this uh, api endpoint successfully with with the existing access token that we have so simply say send so as you can see uh, the call has been unauthorized because this access token was for the open id scope and we cannot use this access token for accessing api auth slash json dot write uh, scope right so it's saying unauthorized now what we have to do is uh, we have to go back to user pool we have to uh, fetch the authorization code again so we'll say launch hosted ui and we will say now uh, before uh, we move on if you look at the url now the scope has been defined api auth slash json dot right right so now uh, we will sign in as a user we will copy this uh, authorization code go back to postman now we have to again fetch the latest access token so replace this authorization code and say send now as you can see now we have not received id token it's because uh, we will only receive id token when open id scope is selected so if you look at this configuration then id token is being unchecked and only the custom scope has been selected right so when and only when open id scope has been selected uh, we will receive id token right so now uh, let's copy this access token and try to invoke this api endpoint and say send now as you can see how we are successfully able to access or invoke that api endpoint with api auth slash json dot write scope now in case uh, if i change this uh, scope to json dot read so go back to resources select post click on method request say edit auth scopes now if i change this let me copy and paste from here to api auth slash json dot read say enter click on this tick mark redeploy this api right now with the same access token we will not be able to access that uh, method or we will not be able to invoke that api endpoint so let's have a look so it's the same access token so i will say send so as you can see it's returning unauthorized right because access token is bind with the scopes right so so here uh, right now the access token that we have is for json dot write scope and not for json dot read scope right so just make sure uh, and i want you to note that each access token is bind with the defined scope now in case if i select uh, both this uh, custom scopes and say save changes and now if i launch the hosted ui and if you look at the url it says scope equal to api auth slash json dot write plus api auth slash json dot read right so now here you can manipulate the scope itself now if you want only for json dot write then you can remove api auth slash json dot read and reload this url then you will only get the access token for api auth slash json dot write and not for api auth slash json dot read so it's a good idea to have access token for each of the scopes separately so that uh, end user cannot uh, misuse the access token for accessing all the resources or the scope that we have defined right now for example we have particular end user who should have the access to write the data within database by invoking this api endpoint and he should not be able to delete that data now in case if we define scope as write plus delete 
then the same user will be able to write the data as well as delete the data but we don't want him to delete the data or we don't want to give the access right so at that point of time the separate uh, access token for individual scope uh, will come into the picture and that would be helpful right so that's how uh, you can uh, define scope and use it in an efficient manner so well uh, that's it for now i hope uh, i was able to make sense uh, in order to explain these things in case uh, if there is any doubt uh, please let me know in comments uh, i'm happy to uh, explain you so well that's it for now and as usual if you want me to do a tutorial on any use case or service then please leave them below and i will try my best to come up with the tutorial as soon as possible and if you have any queries or comments then again please leave them below and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and see you next time